The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 27th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, well, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Well, phone lines are still out, but you can send an email to steve at tfnn.com. Now, inside that subject heading, just to make it easier for me, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving out there. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we've got that mixed bag going today as well, just like yesterday. Same thing with inside the sectors of the S&P 500, as well as the U.S. indices. Dow up 47 points with the S&P being down 22. Nasdaq's off 252 points, about 1 and 2 tenths percent to the downside. Russell is up 8 points, 7 and a half points. Uh, it's up about 3 tenths of a percent. Tranny's down 32. Sox is off 127. That's 2 and 6, 2 and 6 tenth percent to the downside. We've got gold up 18 bucks with silver trading down 23 cents. Lights recruit up 20 pennies. Natural gas up 20, 21 pennies out here. Uh, 30 year treasure up 18 ticks, nine ticks for the 10 year note. Our leaders in the clubhouse, dollar wise, the upside. Micro strategy, a $27 move, 7.5%. Alta Beauty, about 20 bucks, 5%. Um, you've got uh, Agrify Corp, 16 bucks, 26%. Thermo Fisher, 12 bucks, 2%. Our leaders to the our, our shakers to the downside, led by Prime 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 Gug Group Holdings, a hundred dollar move, ninety two percent. Holy shnikes! Holy cow! Where was this close? Oh, well, this must this is a pretty weird stock. So okay, Service Now is uh, down twenty six bucks, two and a half percent. Bank of Montreal twenty six bucks. 5%, Autodesk down 24, 25 bucks, nearly 8% there. And Workday, 22 bucks, 8%. That's why you can see the NASDAQ is getting hit. We'll take a look at the NASDAQ. In fact, try to get a feel for what it's communicating to us. But first, let's just take a look at some of these charts here on my black background screens. The New York Stock Exchange advanced decline uh, oscillator is still above the zero threshold level. That tells us that uh, buyers are the ones in control. We have that same signal from the spot VIX index, which is trading below its 50 day exponential moving average, the 50 day at 1730, the spot VIX at 1447. That also provides buyers with an edge. We take a look at where's price trading in relationship to its Apogee pivot points out here. Well, the ES Mini right now trading below its pivot point at 6020. That would be a that would be a level to watch on any rally. Price regains that level, likely we continue to move higher. In the case of the NQ, it's 2939.50. Um, in the case of the Dow, we can see stronger than either the ES or the NQ. It's just right now on a 30-minute basis, trading down at support at 44,960, still above its apogee pivot point. Same with gold, not with silver. So we've got just these diverging messages out here. The 30-year treasury is above its pivot point at 118.04. Lights recruit needs to regain the 6961 level to get in its bullish mode. Natural gas looking horrible out there, $3.51. Um, U.S. dollar index trading below its apogee pivot point. Really timely with regard to a couple of questions that have come in. Why don't we do this? Is there anything else for me to look at out here? 
Not that I can think of, but if there is, we'll come back to it. So let's go switch over to the uh, white background screens. Give me a moment to do that. Come on, work with us here. Here we go. Now, I'm not going to start here with the NQ. I'm actually going to go over. I think I might have this chart up, which is natural gas. No, well, I'm going to put it up anyways right now. So let's just take a look at the natural gas contract here. Just curious if it is trading at yeah, so it's still trading at potential support here on this move lower. And the potential support is this green oscillator and change line. Now, we had a sell the D point pattern that formed out here on Friday. Friday, Monday, Tuesday, yeah, with that big old bearish engulfing candle. Then we have a new profile that formed yesterday, but price is trading below profile support at $3.30. That tells you and I that this green oscillator and change line needs to hold the support for natural gas. The level is at 3.24. If we close below 3.24 today, that's going to signal a further move lower. In natural gas, the next price target to the downside would be the uh, uh, weekly oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 313. So it's very possible that uh, natural gas could find a bottom here. But if it's going to find a bottom here, we would see that on the intraday charts, or we should see that on the intraday charts. Here's a 30 minute time frame chart for natural gas. Uh, what we don't see out here is any kind of a bottom pattern. Price has been below that oscillator and change line. So that's a key level of resistance out there. If I go down to an even shorter, time frame such as a 15 minute time frame there is a roadsmith indicator bottom pattern here price would need to clear three dollars and 27 cents to suggest that there would be a further rally uh, lastly we'll take a look at a, a 60 minute time frame chart we do not see any kind of a bottom pattern there so will this uh daily oscillator and change line level hold or not it's got its work cut out for it that's for sure so watch those levels and that would be that would give you an idea of where natural gas is headed to now let's go take a look at that nq and see what it is doing out here we know it's trading lower uh, than the actual nasdaq uh, cash indice down 262 points one and a quarter percent we're taking a look at the nq here we talked about during the 11 a.m update how uh, this week on uh, that we've seen price rally into uh, the levels where a counter trend on a daily basis would come to an end, 21075. We're now trading below profile support out there. Where's the next level of support? Well, the two hour chart shows us that price is trading below 2755. That is a level of support, a breakout level. This bar is going to complete at 12 noon. So at 12 noon, it close below that would suggest lower price. However, the 15 minute time frame chart at 1130 will complete a TD nine count bottom pattern. So that says between 11.15 and 11.30, we ought to see some type of rally start. That rally should then take us up towards 28.21. That would take us back above the uh, two hour, or could take us back above that two hour TD9 count breakout level. Those are the two time frames right now when I take a look at all these patterns out here that I would be observing inside of the NQ. So those that are trading that, I hope that helps you out. Now, even if we go down to a five minute time frame chart out here, see what this is doing if this is making that first turn and at the moment if we do get in another minute looks like we'll get a bullish hammer candle that's going to go ahead and confirm a roachmentum indicator bottom so that five minute time frame chart is already signaling to you and i that it's attempting to form a short-term bottom it's still got its work cut out at the 2752 27 uh 27 79 and 28 32 levels steve Rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We take a look at the uh, charts here for Adobe. This is for Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. It's a new format I'm trying to um, create here. It needs a little bit of work at these uh, bottom uh, portions of the screen. We've got still the daily, weekly, and the monthly charts. But then down below for those same time frames are the uh, dance steps, the consecutive moves higher and lower out there. I thought it would be nice for us to be able to take a look at that. So I'll work on that a little bit over the holiday weekend out there, see if I can kind of clean this up a little bit. But here's what we know about Adobe. First of all, we know that Adobe yesterday had a four-day rally. It had a four-day rally, consecutive day rally, as price was running right up into its TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 526.18 is what it looks like. So not really a big surprise here, Mr. Bill, that price has turned down. You know, typically you get four-day moves to the upside in a bull market. You get maybe two-day moves, two- to three-day moves to the down. One, one to three-day moves could even be a four-day four -day move to the downside. So here's what we know. We know that price found resistance at that breakdown level. We also know that price right now is trading into what could be the buy zone. So price is above that bearish structure daily profile for two consecutive, three consecutive sessions out there. If the move to the downside in Adobe, Mr. Bill, is only a counter trend move, price should find support at 50703. The center of that profile, as well as that red oscillator and change line. If price were to close below that, this would tell us it's more than just a counter trend move, but its next level of support on a daily time frame would be at 497.63. We've got a beautiful TD9 count bottom on the weekly time frame. We had three consecutive bars to the upside. We may get a uh, one bar move to the downside come Friday. Don't know just yet. But price is just simply after that TD9 count top, found resistance at the top of its profile, 526.95. So you've got a consolidation going on there. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, as long as price on Friday holds 491.33, um, you know, then you just have, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> consolidation with inside its monthly profile out there. So that's what I see, Mr. Bill, when I take a look at Adobe. I hope that that helped you out. And as always, thanks so much for your request and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. The next request coming in from John C. We were taking a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange charts 
early this morning inside the Tiger's Den. And John asked if I would review those. So we're going to take a look at two different sets of charts. This set of charts here is live. This is the actual New York Stock Exchange. What do we know about it? On a daily time frame, there is no topping pattern. Uh, we made a, a new all-time high a couple of days ago. I think we probably just a well, hair short of that, 2316. Uh, two days ago, today's high, uh, 2219. 2219 versus... 21, 20, uh, 2300 out there. Okay. So um, no top. You're in bar number six. Maybe you get a TD9 count top next week. Maybe you don't. The weekly time frame chart has got no topping pattern. It's got a signal of a road momentum indicator signal, but that needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm any kind of a top. The New York Stock Exchange daily, weekly, and monthly right now are in full breakout mode. So that's the general market conditions out there. The monthly chart will negate a road momentum indicator top. Uh, it will negate a TD9 count top come Friday, unless we get some gigantic sell-off between now and the uh, first uh, few trading hours on uh, Friday. That doesn't seem likely. So the New York Stock Exchange is in a full breakout mode daily, weekly, and monthly. We also took a look at these charts, and my apology is that uh, these will not be completely live. Uh, when I say these, I'm referring to the New York Stock Exchange top 100 uh, U.S. stocks and top 100 international stocks. For those to become live, I've got to switch to a different data feed out there. The NDX uh, chart down below in the very left, that's the only one that's live. But here's what we know about the top 100 U.S. stocks inside the New York Stock Exchange. Yesterday, they closed above their TD9 count breakout level, 17.059. That's a bullish signal uh, for the uh, daily time frame. That's it. And we take a look at the weekly time frame just down below. So I'd be you got the daily uh, right here in the center for the top 100 U.S. Down below it is the international. We take a look at the international stocks. We can see that the all-time high was made back here on September 26th. It's been trading lower. Yesterday was an all-time high. In, well, it was really a couple days ago. Two days ago was an all-time high. Yesterday was a continuation of that for the top 100 U.S. stocks. If you take a look at the weekly time frame, it closed this week on Friday above 17.099.22. Is going to negate its TD9 count top. This tells us about the strong move in U.S. large cap stocks out here. This is where global capital flows to. They want to be in the large cap area out there. So we know that we've got global capital flow coming to the U.S. Not so much for the international stocks. They, you know, didn't make it last time. Maybe an all new all time high was a couple of months ago out there. So that's my review of those charts, John. If there was additional information that you needed, uh, please let me know what that is, and I'll try to pull it up. But uh, otherwise, have a happy Thanksgiving, you and your family. Uh, Ron wrote in. I'm going to go ahead and close these charts up out here. We don't need to go back and access those. Free up a little bit of. So we've got really two questions. One coming from Ron R. is asking on the U.S. dollar, do we have a reversal? And Ben asking uh, if we could take a look at the uh, euro. Ben's a big fan. Well, Ben, I'm a big fan of yours. So let's do this here. I'm going to go ahead and first move over. We'll come back and forth between the black background screen uh, because I can show the US, the live U.S. dollar index there. And we'll come back here and take a look at the euro, the yen, and the pound. So I'm going to switch over screens right now and be able to share with Ron – what level the U.S. dollar index needs to close below to suggest that there could be a reversal, a change in trend, a short-term change in trend. And that's going to come from this chart right here. So we use these profiles. They're very helpful to us. What we can see right now about the U.S. Now, this is a 10-minute delay on the U.S. dollar index. So it may be trading at something slightly different than where we're trading on my screen. But here's what we do know, that this has a buy zone. And price is trading into the buy zone right now. The buy zone is created by a bullish structured profile. A bullish structured profile, the top of the profile is where sellers reside, period. The bottom of the profile is where buyers reside, period. The center of the profile is where the buyers and sellers within that range <coughs> believe there's fair value. So the way I look at it, it's 50-50. you got 50% of buyers, 50% of sellers at that line. What's that line? That's at 106.11. When price is pulling back, so now what we know is we have more buyers between the area of 105.82 and 106.11. This is where the buyers should come in. If price closed below 105.82, 
for two consecutive sessions, Ron, then yes, we would have a profile change in trend. And we could take a look at a weekly time frame. So let's do this here. Let me just change this over to the weekly. These profiles ought to pick up the weekly profile. It does. Uh, so the weekly profile here, 105.82. Let me just make sure because that says daily. So that's not right. But give me a second here. We'll make a quick change out there. We're going to try to at least. So profiles. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So let me just add the weekly to the chart, see if they'll pop up here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we can see that the weekly profiles are below price. Now, that is a bullish message. If price were to close, though, below 105.82, then the next area you'd be looking for a price move to would be 105.06. That's the top of this new weekly profile. So we come back to this break. So I hope that answered your question, Ron. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to Ben's question with regard to the euro. But we'll take a look at the euro, the Japanese yen, and the Great British Pound. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. So 
Well, we're taking a look at the euro, the daily time frame chart for the euro. And uh, I believe uh, Ben is asking, you know, is the euro about to turn here? Well, we can see it's got an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. I've just got the uh, C to D leg that's drawn in there. We've made a more than a one to one A to B equals CD. Today's candle likely to become a bullish engulfing candle at day's end. That then confirms a buy the D point pattern. So the answer to your question as of 11.31 a.m., Ben, is yes, the euro has made a bottom. Now the question becomes, where is price headed to? I'll leave you to do retracements um, along the C to D leg. Uh, well, let me see. I can, I can put this. The retracement tool on NinjaTrader is really not the best, uh, but I can still, you can still use it. So I'll give you a kind of a, a ballpark. That's what we're taking a look at for, with regard to retracement levels out here. And this will just be one area. So we're at the 0.382 retracement as we speak right now. The next area would get you up towards the 107 level. That would be the 0.618. The 0.786 gets you up to the 1079 area out there. So you're going to want to watch those. Don't pay attention to that blue diagonal line. That's just your uh, C to D extension of that A to B line out there. Uh, so that would be one area to be looking. But what we want to take a look at here also is the weekly time frame chart. When the weekly time frame chart for the euro formed its most recent top out here, it was a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top uh, formed on the trading week of August 30th. Well, turns out that unless we have a super duper giganto rally uh, between today and Friday, in other words, a rally that would generate a close in the euro above 1.0834, not likely to unfold, you're going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom pattern for the weekly time frame. That now provides you with an additional target to the upside, Ben. And that additional target to the upside would be its oscillator and change line. It's currently printed at 1.076. So likely, the uh, euro is likely to rally, get stronger, right? And it's a 57.6 weighting inside the U.S. dollar index. So this applies back to Ron out there. If the euro is going to actually pull off that move, now realize it's done a 38% move so far today. Maybe it's going to pull back a bit. You're going to want to watch intraday. But, Ron, if, in fact, the euro, because the daily and weekly are confirming the bottom, does rally up towards that 107 level out there, very likely we would see the U.S. dollar index bust below the bottom of that daily profile. That then brings in place the top of that weekly level that we look at. That's how you would put that together. If we take a look at the Japanese yen, the Japanese yen formed a Roachman indicator top a couple of weeks ago. And you can see that we're trading lower. Do I have a downside price target for the yen? We do, and we're sitting at it right now. So the key level of support for the yen is its weekly oscillator and change line. That exact print is 151.13. Make it 151.12. If price closes below that, then it will have lost momentum to the upside, and that's going to suggest that we had lower. Now, if it closes below that level, where's the lower target? Well, it would be its TD9 count bottom pattern. That would be the low from the week of September 20th. Well, it would be the higher low for the week of September 20th. We're not going to worry about that just yet. Price is sitting at critical support. If the yen is moving lower here, then the U.S. dollar index is getting weaker. So you have the euro that's potentially signaling weaker for the dollar. The yen, that's uh, and this is a 14% weighting inside the U.S. dollar index. And uh, so watch that key level of support on the weekly time frame. That will provide you with the information you're looking for there, even though, <coughs> Ben, you were only asking about the euro. <coughs> This is going to impact Ron's question about the U.S. dollar index. Finally, we get down to the pound. The pound does not have a completed A to B equals CD pattern. The, uh, let me move this back here. The A to B point, I'll just draw this in here so you can see it. We'll just move it over. The A to B point runs from that TD9 count top that it formed. And I would take it all the way down here. Uh, and then if we just simply move this line over, what you're going to see is we have not attained that one-to-one -one level out there. So even though um, we're getting bullish signs out here, we haven't, uh, we don't have a bottom pattern. However, we can see that price right now is trading above its oscillator and change line. So that's a nice big move. It's rising. The U.S. dollar index is falling. As long as it remains above 1.26, well, we would likely see a further rally. It's price target to the upside, and I'm not saying it's going to get there, but it's the price target. Is at uh, buck twenty nine out there. If that unfolds, that's the daily time frame for the pound. If that unfolds, well, the U.S. dollar index is going to get its butt kicked, for sure. If all three of these things, then I, what I can share with you, Ron, is that that support level in the U.S. dollar will not hold. 
Now, when we take a look at the pound on a weekly basis, very similar to what we took a look at inside of the euro. And that is that we would, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, that come Friday, um, we are likely going to get a confirmed TD Nike out bottom inside of the pound. What is its price target to the upside? 129. So you've got 129 on the uh, weekly time frame chart, 129 on the daily time frame chart. Maybe it is going to make that big climb. Now, this is only day one potentially above that red oscillator and change line out there. So, you know, Friday's action is going to be important as well. Um, currencies, I think currencies are actually trading tomorrow. In any event out there, that's what's going on. We take the U.S. dollar, the euro, the yen, and the pound, and I hope that that helps you out. Ron and Ben, have a, a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving holiday with you and yours. YOY is asking for where is the support in the SMHs out there? Well, we should be able to answer that question for you. If we take a look at the SMHs, support, I've got support right now. Uh, so let's take a look at the monthly time frame. The monthly time frame shows a TD9 count. Uh, top. It shows a roach momentum indicator top. It shows a bearish structured profile. Price has been consolidated with inside the range of that sell zone for the last four weeks. That sell zone is between the levels of 235.43 and 259.25. If we close below 235.43 on Friday, that's going to suggest that the SMH's next level of support on a monthly time frame would be down at 187.79. <coughs> Weekly time frame, TD9 count, roads to indicator top. Price trading below its bearish structured weekly profile. Well, that suggests to move down to the bottom of the profile over time, and that's at the 208.75 level. So I'd say 208.75 to 218.22 on the weekly time frame. And now we take a look at the daily time frame out here. Do we have any level of support? Well, level of support that we'd really be looking at, let's take a look at today's volume first. Let's look at a price target. The swing point that it's trying to take out today takes us back to November 18th, 7.7 .7 million shares. We've been open for two hours of trading, and today we've done 2.5. Now, this is a light day of trading, but that's still about a 7 million share a day going into a 7 million share a day. So what we might be seeing here in the SMHs is a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So let's draw that in here. We'll do the old copy, paste, and assemble. But Stevie is a CPA. Let's do the paste piece of it. Now let's do the assemble. So you've got a one-to-one -one price projection around the 224 level out there. So I would say support. The support area is at 212.70, but you're in A to B equals CD pattern, and that's the price projection. So why, oh, why? Those are the levels I've got for you for support, as well as the potential direction of where price is headed to. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's move on to our next stop, uh, stock AQST. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Dan's interested first, at least in the longer term time frame. So let's look at the monthly time frame chart and see what we see out here. First, we can see that price is trading above the top of its uh, monthly profile, 474. Assuming that it closes above that on uh, Friday, we'll have uh, three consecutive bars above that level, suggests that we should go rally towards its recent high. Now, the recent high, if I get my cursor out here, can tell you the exact month. That would be the month of uh, March 2024. Now, Dan, volume on that bar was 82 million shares. Last month, we moved higher with 28 million shares. This month, with basically a day's worth of trading, we're at 30.8 million shares. We're moving up into that swing point with lighter volume. So it's inching its way higher there. We've had four consecutive weeks to the upside, four consecutive, four consecutive months to the upside. Wouldn't be a surprise that we close lower this month. So I don't think that we rally beyond uh, last week's high. And we get at least a one-month bar to the downside. Now, the question becomes, is this a one-month bar to the downside, a two-month bar to the downside? We'll have to look at the weekly and the daily time frame charts to get some kind of message there. But uh, it does not necessarily mean that it has to be more than a one-month move lower out there, especially with price above profile resistance. Now, we look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows that we're trading with inside its profile level. But right now, the key juggernaut, is its oscillator and change line at 545. If price can close above 545, you'll see 542. Uh, we have, this is gonna be the second week to the upside. This typically moves higher for two to three weeks at a time out there. So next week, likely to be a further move higher. And if we look at the daily time frame chart, what we can see out here is price is trading inside its bullish structure daily profile. Dan, we're well above the center of that line at 461. We're above the oscillator and change line. 534 is the price target. This will be day number four of consecutive moves to the upside. Uh, we've had five consecutive moves going back into the August time frame out there. And we had a four-bar move back in October. So I would say you're getting ready for some type of one to two-bar retracement, most likely. That begins, maybe it's Friday, maybe it's a Monday out there. That's what I see when I take a look at AQST. Hope that helps you out, and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Uh, let's go take a look at SMCI for Joe, see if Stevie can find it. There we go. So we take a look at SMCI, Joe. What this has done is this ran into resistance at its breakdown level. So beautiful rally, beautiful island bottom, Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom signal out there. That's the on the daily time frame. That's a little black square in the bottom. The bullish type of uh, uh, candlestick pattern that you can get. Uh, so, but price ran right into resistance. Yeah, it closed just above it the next day, right back below it. That was yesterday. Today, we have an inside bar. So all that we know right now, is it a top? 
I don't have a topping pattern, but getting back to your breakdown level can be a top. But we're not trading below yesterday's low right now, so I don't know that it's really a top out there. Let's look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart shows that prices rallied up into that oscillator and change line. You can see we've been below the oscillator and change line for over a year, well, for since April 5th of 2024 out there. So uh, quite a while. If price could close above it, it being 36.91, Joe, that would be a bullish outcome. But right now, that's held as resistance. And the monthly chart is uh, trying to get back inside of its profile. It needs a it needs a close on Friday above 32.68. So I don't have a clear signal on a daily time frame as to what its real intent is out there. But at least you know the key battleground that if price closes above, then you rally back on when it comes to SMCI. So, Joe, thanks for the request. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Nicholas would like to take a look at uh, Triple M out here. So we take a look at uh, this uh, set of charts. Uh, Nicholas uh, missed the TD9 count bottom. We can see that completed a couple of days ago. Um, we are now trading above its TD9 count breakdown resistance. Though so this has been a nice rally out here. Now, what it's doing as we speak right now, Nicholas, it's testing a swing point from November 11th out there. November 11th, 3.7 million shares. We've tested that high so far today. We're doing 989,000 shares. So we're about a 3 million share day, give or take. Again, the volume on that swing was 2.2. So closing above, I'm sorry, it wasn't 2.2, it was uh, 3.7. So we're going to get a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. Now, Tom would tell us that the expression there is, if you can't bust them to the upside, you try to bust them to the downside. Sometimes old resistance can become new support. So that first level to the downside is really 133.31, but below that would be 130.57. You've got a weekly uh, TD9 count top, but price may have completed its work to the downside because the downside it found support at both its TD9 count breakout and profile level. You're consolidating with inside the profile, but it is trading into its sell zone, which is between the 130, 363 and 136. 46 level and you have a monthly TD9 count uh, top as well that typically would take price back to support which is at 108.49 but the daily is saying otherwise the weekly is saying otherwise I don't think the monthly at this stage here is controlling the ground game so watch over the next uh, as far as moves to the upside one two three today is four bars to the upside since it uh, didn't uh, bust through that swing point or likely he's not going to do that with volume, I'd say a one to two day pullback is in order, Nicholas. And then you can go ahead and fire away at your, uh, if that in fact unfolds, you can fire away at your options trade. Nicholas also wanted to take a look at TXN. So we take a look at TXN. I believe it's probably for the same setup out here. It's got a TD9 count bottom now. Price ran into resistance at the top of its profile yesterday, 206.49. The bottom of the profile is support. 197.08. The TD9 count bottom is a swing point from November 21st. Volume there was 8 million shares. Today, we're pulling back with 957,000 shares. Your buy point on this is anywhere between now uh, 197.08 or even as low as 195.90. But that would be the trade setup on the daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, Price is trading right now into the support of its bullish structured weekly profile. So on Friday, you'd also like to see this close back above 198.36. We're at 198.24 right now. Monthly chart, TD9 count top, price is following support at its oscillator and change line, consolidated with inside its profile levels. But its signal on a monthly is neutral. The weekly, well, we won't know really until Friday. It does have a road momentum indicator top out there. But the daily, it's either just a consolidation between profiles, but you're looking for an entry point. And with that light volume pullback, I'd say it's around the 197.08 level. So, Nicholas, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. As always, thanks for your request. We've got a request here from InnoVisual, and he's asking, do we see the queues headed lower all day out there. Well, let's go take a look at the NQ chart. So we covered this earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and review it uh, in just a quicker fashion. And so what we're looking at here in the NQ, we looked at two important patterns to be looking at. One was the 15-minute chart, and the other was the 120-minute chart. These charts of the 120-minute bar will close at 12 noon. It's trading below 
2755. It's TD Nank out breakout level. It's the 15 minute time frame chart that provided us with the first potential bottom signal. And that was a TD Nank out bottom. That went ahead and completed at 1130, as we suggested. Now, what price is supposed to do is rally up towards the Sassler and change line, 2770 or so. Here's the key, though. If price closes below this TD Nank out bottom pattern, that low out there, it's low of the day. And that low is at 2696. This is the NQs we're looking at. If we close below that on a 15 minute bar, well then we're definitely headed lower. I don't know if there's any other bottom patterns that might form on intraday charts like a 30 or a 60. I don't see them as we speak right now. We'll finish that answering that question. We get back from the spring. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at um, that 15-minute chart for the NQ. Now, this bar obviously is going to close at 12 noon. It's 11.54. The volume on that TD9 count bar is 24,000 contracts. So far, we're at 10,000. Looks like, and we've tested the low of that swing point. So it looks like we're going to get a test rejection of that 11.15 low on the NQ for its 15-minute time frame. Still suggests we should rally up towards the 2770-ish area. If we close above 2770, ish we should rally further out there. But again, if we close below that TD9 count bottom on a 15-minute basis, that says that we had lower. That's about the best that I can do for you, uh, you know, on the uh, Qs, the NQ, the NASDAQ 100. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. We're going to finish out the show. Well taking a look at AU out here. 
the question for DMAC is, uh, you know, what's going on with today's move lower? So I don't have any kind of a topping pattern. We are back inside of its profile and below its red oscillator and change line for its daily time frame. It's possible that where AU is headed to is its buy zone. And that buy zone DMAC is between 2360 and 2411. The weekly time frame chart just shows that we're consolidating with inside its profile. That's between the range of 2293 to 2531. Monthly, which has a TD9 count top, is testing a key level of support, 2510. If on Friday, price closed below 2510, we likely head down to the 2131 level. So it could be 2131 to 2293 to 2360-ish as price targets to the downside. Why is it moving lower? That I don't have an answer to. We had, um, is there anything else that I can really see? Nothing else that I really see out here on AU. So DMAC, hope that that helps you out. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And I want to wish a happy Thanksgiving to everybody, even if you didn't write in or you didn't send me a private message to request something. Uh, this is my favorite holiday. I hope you spend as much time with your friends and family. And look, you are our family too. You're our extended family. And we are so grateful here at TFNN for your presence. So have a happy Thanksgiving. Be safe out there. And we'll look forward to being back with you Monday, 11 a.m. sharp. Take care, folks. And eat about 10,000 calories or so come tomorrow. Uh, maybe not. Take care. <laughs>